Hi, this is Derek Packard with BusinessHangouts.net. We're doing another live hangout today for small business, and with us today is Mike Molson. Hey, Michael, there you are. Good He's morning, Derek. Mike's the Chief Technology Officer with Duke Inc., and today we're going to be talking about uh, Office 365 email versus Microsoft Exchange Server. Is that right, Mike? That is correct, yes. Well, what's the? Uh, why don't you give us a little overview, maybe a little bit about the history for people that um, are wondering how Office 365 came into the scene. Sure, I think that's a good way to start. So, um, you know, traditionally, people have had email in their offices. They would uh, have a server in their office, and the email would be based out of the office. In today's terminology, we call it on-premise, but it's just a server that's in your office, and you have the exchange running there. Um, over the years, there's been problems with that, and uh, we'll go through some of those today talking about what the benefits of moving to the cloud are. And so when cloud technology uh, was developed, people started switching to the cloud. And we've been doing uh, technology since 1993. I would say half of our clients now have shifted from doing it on-premise with the server in their house or in their in-house in their business to doing using the cloud. And so uh, the cloud means that your server now is on the internet somewhere and you have access to it and it runs just like it's in your office. But there's so many other benefits for why it shouldn't be in your office. But that's basically the comparison. Why should you have it in the cloud versus why should you have it you know, within the four walls of your business? Okay. So the title, Office 365 Email versus Microsoft Exchange Server, we're really talking about uh, Office 365 is a cloud solution versus a traditional uh, on-premise solution. Is that what you mean? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. Okay. So what about, you know, looking at some of the issues with that, what about, like, the issue of availability? Is that impacted? Is there a plus or minus with either one? Yeah, so it's greatly improved, actually, with Office 365, the availability. And the reason is, is because when you have a server in your office, you're uh, susceptible to the environment that you're in. And so some uh, clients of ours have buildings that their electricity doesn't work great. Uh, we have a law firm that their power would be going out weekly. And for a law firm, their email is just vital to what they do. So um, they switched to Office 365 and their availability went through the roof. With Microsoft, I mean, they do have their outages, but it's like 99% or something like that. It's been tremendous. And so uh, the availability is much greater and the reason for that is, is that Microsoft has data centers, and they have redundancy built into these data centers. So let's say you're, you're living in uh, Illinois, and you're on the central server, and that server goes down because of a snowstorm or something. Then they shift it to you know, the west or to the east, and you never even see that happening in the background. So literally, we have clients who um, the power is out in their building, and yet they're still receiving emails on their mobile. Phone. So availability goes way up with Office 365. Okay, um, and then from the standpoint of, of, I think a big question I know I would have if, if uh, I had 50 employees would be the issue of how do we keep all our devices synced up on this? Does that help with that? Yeah, absolutely. So continuing with the law firm example, you know, lawyers used to stand before uh, the judge with blackberries, and now they stand before them with tablets because they're much larger to see. But they also, they don't want to work on a tablet in their office, so they want to have a full-blown computer in their office, whether it's a Mac or a PC, and then they want to have the tablet in front of them when they're standing before the judge. And then when they're driving, you know, they want to have their cell phones with them so that, you know, they um, can receive messages when they're out and about. And uh, Office 365 synchronizes all of those. And so it's, it's really... The, the backbone is Exchange, and it does a great job of keeping track of everything. So is there an issue with uh, Mac versus PC or Android and iOS? Anything? No, like really not at all. And that's another uh, brilliant thing, I guess, uh, to use a bridge term, it's brilliant, uh, <laughs> that happens with Office 365 is, is that uh, it, it goes across platform. So I have, uh, personally, I have an Android phone. We also have guys in the firm who have uh, iPhones. Uh, I have a iPad tablet, and uh, you know, it just goes across to both platforms uh, very easily. Okay. So another, I know another huge question would be the issue of security uh, with all the stuff that's been going around the internet today and the NSA and all that stuff. 
how is uh, is this is there a plus or minus from a security standpoint? Yeah, so it's another plus because if you think about it, the security that's built into the Microsoft data centers is you know state of the art. They do not want to be hacked. It would be so embarrassing for them to be hacked. Um, so they built in you know uh, state of the art, uh, very tight security, and that's where your email is sitting on the the data centers that are redundant. Now you can't build that same kind of security into your office server environment. You could, but it just wouldn't be um, feasible to do. So, you know, for a lot of our SMB small business clients, I mean, they get security that they could never end up paying for uh, to have in their own office. So it's just uh, another benefit, really, of the, the Office 365. Now, how, Mike, how big an issue is the, um, the, the security issue from your perspective? You're dealing with networks and email all the time. Um, is that something that small business owners really need to be worrying about, or is it another thing that's overblown just from Internet PR? Yeah, no, it's really not overblown. I mean, we've had cases where, uh, and we have, you know, uh, really secure uh, firewalls, uh, Linux firewalls that we put on people's um, clients, but some of the clients we get to, we inherit, and they don't uh, have that kind of security yet, and people have literally gone in and hacked their servers and represented somebody in the organization because they've just figured out from the email well let's see somebody uses password as the word password and then they get in and they hack it and then they just start sending out emails of all kinds and so we've had that happen you know since 93 we've had that happen a couple times but it is possible and it does happen daily um, you know we try once we take over a client to close the door so to say so to speak but even at that uh, if the if the hackers are out there and they're intent on finding your data, you know they'll get through. And uh, Microsoft just stays on top of that in a way that you know usually small businesses can't. I know I have a client that has just made the change from um, with to a I think a bigger exchange server in house, and she happens to be on an accounting firm. And they have online data for I you know tax files and that sort of thing and she her consultant told her to stay with um, exchange server in-house and your opinion would be that it's better to go to the cloud-based office 365 be you know for security it's better security yeah absolutely I have a brother-in-law who's a uh, security expert for um, Cisco and uh, if I was to set him off to say, okay, try and hack into the Microsoft servers or go and hack into this accountant server, my guesses would be that he could probably hack into the accountant server but not to the Microsoft server. Okay. So now from the standpoint, what are some of the other um, issues that we need to talk about? I know uh, disaster recovery would be a big one. Uh, what would you say about that? Yeah, so that's another great thing. I mean, all businesses should have some sort of disaster recovery plan, and uh, we build that into our clients. I mean, you should you should be doing backups daily, um, but you know, backups are really just backing up the data. Disaster recovery is more for how are you going to recreate your business if there's a disaster, if your building catches on fire, and so with um, the with all your email being out on a server that's outside of your presence outside of your premises and being backed up by data centers you could literally you know your building could burn down and then you know with your tablet or your iPhone you could still be up and running with all your history and all your data there so again it's just a redundancy that um, if you were to try and recreate it on your own you could and we have done that and some of our clients do use uh, off-site locations to recreate their environment but as far as just email goes for the money that you're paying for Office 365 you're gonna have built-in disaster recovery okay now of course a big question for everybody's gonna be cost how what about the cost question yeah so there's different plans with uh, Office 365 Office 365 is a suite that does more than just email there's also um, uh, SharePoint, which is a way to store files out on the internet so that you can share them uh, and they would be stored on the cloud. And then there's also a program called Link that does a lot of what Google Plus does where you have these uh, video interactions, uh, video conferencing, uh, instant messaging and all that. 
So there's different packages depending on what you want to get. The base package of just email is four dollars per email or per person really because you could have multiple email addresses, aliases if you will, per person. So four dollars a person. So let's say you had a 20 person office. A month you'd, you'd pay um, eighty dollars a month, four times twenty, and then um, the conversion for us to come in and convert you from the on-premise uh, environment or any environment really to Office 365 would be about we spend about an hour to an hour and a half um, per person to get their history years of history uh, transferred over so that's the the base really of, of uh, it. Are there any other cost considerations I mean what about maintenance and that sort of thing? Yeah so that's another great uh, aspect of this is that for our clients who have on-premise or in-house uh, servers, we're the ones, Duke Associates is the ones who are maintaining that. We go in on a, a weekly basis and we just make sure that the server is up and running and it'll be running for next week. But we charge people for that. And with uh, Office 365, we don't do that for those clients on their email servers. So Microsoft has their technicians and they're concerned with keeping the servers up and running. So maintenance costs uh, for most of our clients uh, go down because we're not maintaining their exchange servers anymore. Okay. Are there any other considerations along that line in terms of, like from your experience, the work um, you know that you would traditionally do maintaining something on a client's server versus having it on the Microsoft server? Yeah. I mean, um, from a client aspect, so let's say, uh, using our lawyers again, um, they have their tablets and they've got their PCs in the office, we're still maintaining them. We get calls, you know, from people saying, "I just bought a new phone. Can you help me get hooked up?" You know, so we maintain those. But um, is there's also the uh, aspect of upgrades. Microsoft comes out with Exchange Server about every uh, three years. There was a 2003, a 2007, a 2010, and now, you know, it's 2013. So for our clients who have Exchange Server, if they want the latest and greatest technology then we have to upgrade that server and that's a timely thing and there's you know um, costs about involved with just the purchase of the software but then the upgrade itself with office 365 it's built in you get those you don't even know what's going on in the background and uh, you know you could be Monday you could uh, show up to work and you're working on an exchange 2020 and you wouldn't know the difference because they make it seamless like that for you so it saves in maintenance fees it saves in uh, upgrade costs um, and yeah, just our time, I guess, really. Mm -hmm. What about the issue of spam and uh, email deliveries, that sort of thing? Yeah, so in a traditional on-premise uh, in-house server, your server is viewed by the internet and uh, the internet has to decide does it trust you or not. And if you have a rogue email program uh, in your, if, if someone's browsing the web within your organization, and they get contract a virus and it starts to send out a bunch of emails well that's coming from your server and then your server is marked as untrusted within the internet community and so um, that is an issue that uh, if you have office 365 um, that really doesn't occur because you can't use the exchange servers on the on the cloud to spam through so we have literally had clients in the past who couldn't send out email because they were viewed as spammers until we came in and and uh, fix that situation for them. But, so that is greatly reduced and some of our clients have actually moved to Office 365 because of, of that issue. So I, I know spam is a, is a very big deal, it's very annoying. You're saying, if I'm understanding you correctly, that with Office 365 using their email server you're going to be spammed less and you're going to be trusted more. Exactly. And, you know, as far as spam goes, and there's, and we could, you know, uh, there's a there's a way within Office 365 to to tell what email comes in, what should come in, and what should not come in. And now on a traditional on-premise server, that's an extra program that you have to buy, purchase, and maintain. With Office 365, it's included, but you still get the flexibility of saying, well, this is spam or this is not spam. Because what's spam to me may not be spam to you. Maybe I want to see everything about uh, football, and you want to see everything about golf. Well, I can then you know, uh, say don't don't send me anything about golf, and uh, vice versa with you. So, 
Yeah, it's that's included. That's another aspect of Office 365 that has really been a benefit. Okay. So <clears throat> are there any other things that need to be considered in, in small business owners or administrators making this decision? No, I, you know, we've gone through seven or eight of them, uh, you know, today. There, there are others, you know, that, that we've come across, but those, I think, are the major ones. And it's really, it gets down to cost. People hear $4 a month, and they think, well, I've got 20 people. That's, uh, you know, $80 a month. And then, you know, if you look at it uh, for the year, I mean, it's uh, $960. But if you were to purchase an exchange server, a current exchange server, you know, that ballpark's in the four to $5,000 range. I mean, you wouldn't hit break even for four or five years, and by then, the technology's out of date. So it's a good solution. I really think it makes a lot of sense for a lot of small business um, clients. Okay. Well, to wrap things up, Mike, let's just hit those main points again for anybody that joined us late. Just, sure. uh, just touch on them again. Okay. So we talked about availability and how um, you're going to have more uptime because of the data centers that Microsoft offers. Uh, we talked about synchronization, how your tablets and phones and uh, PCs and laptops, all of that, if you could have four different devices and all the email will be synchronized on that. We talked about security, how you can't replicate the security that Microsoft offers on their data centers. So you're more vulnerable with an in-house server, I believe, to be hacked than you would be through that Microsoft would be. Um, then we talked about uh, disaster recovery. Your building could burn down and you could still have your email. You could be running out of a burning building emailing if you wanted to. Um, and then I forget what the, the next one was, uh, reduced up, upgrade costs. So continually, Microsoft, when they come out every three years with the new exchange program, you will be upgraded, and there won't be any additional cost to you on that. Um, and then we talked about reduced maintenance costs. For our clients who have switched Office 365, uh, they incur less maintenance costs because Microsoft is doing the maintenance, and they don't have to pay us or an outside third party to maintain it. And the last was just the reduction of um, uh, spam and your organization being seen as a spam uh, email server. Uh, Microsoft's uh, servers are trusted and they don't allow their servers to be uh, spammed or seen as spam. So there's, there's, um, there's, there's a great number of reasons why Office 365 is a better technology. All right, Mike. Thanks so much for that information today. I'm sure that'll be a benefit to a lot of small business owners, uh, for the folks out there that want to get a hold of Mike, they can email him at mike at dukeinc.com. Mike, you want to just tell people your phone number? We won't write it down, but just tell it to them if they want to call you. Sure. So I have two phone numbers. Our business is actually based out of uh, Illinois and Colorado. And uh, I'll give you the, the uh, Illinois number is 847-565-3853. And 3853 spells out Duke. And then in Colorado, it's 719 522 Duke or 3853. Alright, well thanks so much Mike for being with us on that Business Hangout today. This is Derek Packard uh, from businesshangouts.net and we hope you enjoyed this Hangout and we'll let your friends know about it. We think this is incredibly important information. We're all about helping businesses save money and it sounds like with Office 365 if you have over five employees you really need to take a serious look at uh, some real savings that you can have from the software. So until next time, thanks for watching on businesshangouts.net.